Hopefully you can see it clearly. What you want to do before you start is measure the actual incision. And like I said, make sure there's no excessive redness. It should just be slightly pink around here and it really should be intact. There definitely should be no bleeding, no pus, anything like that. So then you get a suture removal kit. And let's open that up. In the suture removal kit, you will find some tweezers. These are the scissors, and then you have some alcohol. So what you can do, you can rub the alcohol on there, make sure it's nice and clean. Just in case there is a little bleeding, it does come with a, a piece of gauze. So, first, you're going to count one, two, three, four. We have four sutures, and if you want to wait till the end, you can count at the end too. Then what you're going to do is you're going to pull up and then you're going to cut and then you're going to pull it out but make sure that the side you're pulling out is the one without the knot just like that so there's one and we're going to pull up and come up again just like that so now we go to get the third one and we cut here and finally the fourth one. Now it's really easy when your patient has four sutures. A little bit of a different story when they have 26 or 20 a year. <laughs> okay, so that's it. After this, whatever the doctor orders, they usually order Steri strips. So. We get our Steri strips, and then I like to put, like I said before, I like to put the skin prep around the outside. It's, it looks like an alcohol swab, and that just makes it stay a little bit better. And then you lift like this. Make sure the incision is going to be in the middle, and you go down like this. And perfect. So you just tell your patient that they can shower, they should not immerse themselves in water, but they can get it wet, it's okay, just no direct soap, no direct water, and then they can just pat it dry and just let them fall off as, as they do, uh, naturally. Alright guys, I hope you enjoy that. If you guys want to see more skills videos, just give this video a thumbs up, post a comment, let me know, and I can't wait to see you guys in the future. Bye! The minimum equipment you will need to suture a wound is suture material. There are many different kinds of suture material available on the market and a full discussion of their pros and cons are outside the scope of this demonstration. Today we will use a nylon monofilament suture. You will also need a needle holder, a pair of scissors and either toothed or non-toothed forceps depending on what's available. You will need local anesthetic to anesthetize the wound 
some gauze and a cleaning solution. After explaining the procedure to the patient, don universal precautions and proceed gently cleaning the external surface of the wound. Once this has been done, inject local anesthetic along the wound edges, approaching the wound from the wound side itself and not injecting through the skin. Make sure that the entire wound is anesthetized along both its lengths, from edge to edge. Once the wound has been anesthetized, safely dispose of your shot and allow the local anesthetic enough time to work. After an appropriate passage of time, test the wound edge and confirm that your anesthesia has been successful. It is now appropriate to clean the wound a bit more vigorously, including the inside of the wound, and to rinse or irrigate it out if there's any foreign material. This should now cause less discomfort or pain to the patient. Once the skin has been prepared, proceed to suturing. In this case, we are going to use a nylon monofilament suture. Open your suture, reveal the needle, and grab the needle with your needle holder. Hold the needle about a third to a quarter from the back of the needle on the flat surface with the tip of the needle holder. This allows for an easy rotating motion of the wrist to take the needle through the skin. When suturing a wound, we suggest starting in the middle and then progressively halving the gaps in between to ensure even distribution of sutures. For a simple interrupted suture, insert the needle at 90 degrees to the skin and with a rotating motion of the wrist, simply twist the needle through. You could also insert on the one end, come out the middle of the wound and insert again. Pull the suture material through, giving just enough to suture. There are many ways to tie an instrument knot. One way is the following. Turn it twice around the instrument, grab the suture and pull it across the wound as such. Only enough force should be applied to approximate the wound inches and avoid excessive tension across the wound. Now rotate the material in the opposite direction around your instrument, grab the tip and tie another knot. Finally, two in the direction, same as before, and complete your knot. Seat the knot over one of the entry edges and neatly trim the edges of your suturing material. Another useful suture to use is a vertical mattress suture. A vertical mattress suture takes a bite of tissue that is slightly further and deeper than a simple interrupted suture initially as an initial throw. Reverse the direction of the needle on your instrument so that you can come back across the wound. To come back across the wound, go shallow and close to the wound edge, grabbing only a small piece of skin. Pull the suture material through until you have just enough to tie the knots. Not the same as before. One, two, pull it across. One, pull it across. And finally, one, two, and put it across. You will notice that the suture lies to the side of the wound with no material crossing it and that it results in slight eversion of the wound edges which may promote wound healing. Finally, I will show you a pulley suture which is a variation on a vertical matter suture and is an extremely useful suture when trying to suture wounds that gape widely or under a lot of tension. Position the needle correctly and start off with a vertical matter suture as shown before. Deep and far, deep and far. Switch the position of the needle and now come back close and shallow and again close and shallow. If you were to complete the suture now, 
This would be a simple vertical matter suture. Instead though, pass your needle through this preserved proximal skin loop, represented on the vertical matter suture as that, pass it through, and now tie the knot. Two, and pull, one, and pull, two, and pull. Turn the edges of the suturing material. By passing the needle back through the proximal skin loop, you have created a pulley effect, allowing the physics of this configuration to spread the tension across the wound much more efficiently and close wounds even under a lot of tension much more efficiently. One potential use for a pulley suture is to do the initial halving or maybe even the second halving and then fill in the rest with simple interrupted sutures in a widely gaping or high tension wound. And that's it. Thank you very much. Hello everyone. Today we shall study about suture materials and suturing techniques. Aims of suturing are to hold a flap over the wound Reapproximating the wound edges, protecting underlying tissues from infection or other irritating factors, preventing post operative hemorrhage. And the instruments needed for suturing are needle holder, it is used to grab onto the suture needle. And we can see here this is the needle holder, and it has got this serrated end so that the needle is held firmly. And other instruments that are needed are forceps, these are used to hold the tissue gently and to grab the needle and suture scissors. These are used to cut the teeth from the rest of the suture material. This is needle holder, forceps, suture scissors and surgical needles. Surgical needle has a basic design composed of three parts, the eye, body and the point. The eye, it is the sliced end of the needle and the body, the body and the point. The eye, which is sliced and permits the suture and needle to act as a single unit to decrease trauma. This is these days the needles are coming without the eye, these are sliced. Previously there, there were definite holes in the eye which was traumatic. And the body, it is the widest point of the needle and is also referred to as the grasping area. The body comes in number of shapes, round, oval, rectangular, trapezoid or sl side flattened. And the point which runs from the tip to the maximum cross-sectional area of the body, the point also comes in a number of different shapes, conventional cutting, reverse cutting, side cutting, taper cut or blunt. And this uh, is a surgical needle and shapes of the needle teeth, these are this come in different shapes like 3 by 8 circle, 1 by 2 circle, straight and special. In this 3 by 8 circle we can see here, this one quadrant is 1 by 4 and greater than 1 by 4 but less than 1 by 2, that is 3 by 4, this is the 3 by 8 needle and this is a 1 by 2 needle, this lower one, this is a 1 by 2 needle. And there are eyed needles and slaced needles, eyed needles are more traumatic, thread passes through the eye and double thread pulled through the tissue. So that is more traumatic and it tends to unthread itself easily that's a disadvantage and uh, these days we have got this type of needles these are switched on needles and they're much less traumatic however they are expensive and needle and suture x is a single unit in this type of needles points of needles they can be tapered blunt and this tapered needles are automatic and used in internal organs the end is pointed towards the end and they can be conventional cutting or reverse cutting we all need to understand the basic difference between the conventional cutting and reverse cutting. In the conventional cutting, the cutting is, is on the inside of the circle and it is more traumatic. We will see how it is more traumatic than the reverse cutting. In the reverse cutting, the cutting is, is on the outside of the circle and it is less traumatic than the conventional cutting. Let's see how is it. In the conventional cutting, the inner circle, we can see here, while we are suturing, the inner circle is the cutting. This is the inner circle is the cutting is and this may cut the soft tissue border and the suture may come off causing tissue trauma here. But in reverse cutting is the outer edge of the circle is cutting outer edge of the cycle is cutting, so here this is the blunt edge, so it will not cut the tissue, so it is less traumatic. Cutting edge is this one, the outer circle, that's why reverse cutting is preferred. And this is the taper cut, taper cut has um, 
plus six on round, but it slightly points towards the moon. Now, characteristics of shooter material. They can be absorbable or non-absorbable, monofilament or multifilament, natural or synthetic. Absorbable sutures, these are self-absorbed in the body and they do not require removal after a certain period of time. Whereas these non-absorbable sutures should be removed after five or seven days. Absorbable sutures are the polyglycolic acid suture and polygalactin suture, polyglactin suture, cat gut suture, polydioxanon suture, and non-absorbable sutures are proline, nylon, polyester, steel, stainless steel suture. And this is a monofilament cat gut, whereas this is a multifilament. This is a multifilament cat gut, and this one is a monofilament cat gut. <coughs> Sorry. Monofilament consists of a single filament like this nylon. This is a monofilament suture. Also, like <coughs> this polypropylene and polydioxanon, these all are monofilament. They consist of a single thread. Whereas the multifilament or braided sutures are the poly polyglycolic acid, PZA sutures, silk sutures, polyester sutures. These all are the multifilament or braided sutures. And monofilament versus multifilament, these all have their own advantages and disadvantages. Uh, braided or multifilament sutures provide better knot security, whereas monofilament sutures provide better passes through tissues. And they're less traumatic. Monofilament sutures elicit lower tissue reaction compared to braided sutures. And also, multifilament sutures threads will generally have greater diameter than the monofilament sutures, which will cause more trauma to the tissue. Natural sutures. Silk and cat gut sutures are the natural sutures where all other sutures are synthetic in nature. And absorbable suture materials, they are broken down by various processes inside the tissue, either by hydrolysis or probiotic enzymatic degradation. And depending upon the material, the process can be from 10 days to 8 weeks. And they are used in patients who cannot return for suture removal or in internal body tissues. If the suture has to be used inside the body tissues and layer upon layer, other sutures are placed. So in the internal part, the absorbable suture materials are used. And occasionally, absorbable sutures can cause inflammation and be rejected by the body then, rather than absorbed because these are foreign particles inside the body and they are highly undesirable in the aesthetic areas. Where aesthetic is concerned, removable sutures or non-absorbable sutures are preferred. Non-absorbable sutures. Non-absorbable sutures are used either on skin wound closure where the sutures can be removed after a few weeks or in areas of tension where absorbable sutures will not suffice. They cause less scarring because they provoke less immune response and are used where cosmetic outcome is important. I mentioned it earlier that where aesthetic is concerned, non-absorbable sutures are used. And they must be removed after a certain time or left permanently. Principle of suturing. The needle should be grasped at approximately one third of the distance from the eye and two thirds from the point. It should be grasped approximately one third distance from the eye and two third distance from the point. This is the correct position to hold the needle. The needle should enter the tissues perpendicular to the tissue surface. This is the correct way. This is the correct way to enter the tissue rather than this because the angle is very, very less and here the needle is entering the tissue exactly in 90 degrees and that is desirable. And the Needles should be passed through the tissues along its curve. The root of the needle through the tissues should be along its curvature. As shown in this figure, the path of the needle should be along its curve. Not like this, where you penetrate, poke here and there and there. This will cause more trauma and healing would also be compromised. The needle should be passed at an equal depth and distance from the incision on both sides. Here, the Distance is less on this side, there is greater this side, this should not be there. The tissue margin should be approximated well before suturing. And while suturing, the suture should be done from movable to the fixed tissue. This is a flap raised here. From this flap towards the fixed tissue, the suture should be done. Not like this, where not like this, where the fixed tissue is penetrated first and the movable tissue is done later. This is not desirable. And from the thinner to the thicker tissue, from the thinner to the thicker tissue, like this, the suturing should be done. And this is the wrong technique because this will come off when trying to suture. And from the deeper to the super deeper to superficial tissue, this is the correct way. From deeper to superficial tissue, the suturing should be done. And tissues must never be closed under tension. What happens when we close under tension? The tissues are compressed here and they will undergo necrosis. And the knot should never lie on the incision line. 
because this will cause the weakening of bacteria and other pathogens and infections are very likely if the knot is in the incision line. And the incision should be placed at the greater depth than at the distance from the incision. So as to avoid the wound margins. The wound margins if a the wound margin should be inverted. If inverted and they are within the sutures, the necro tissue necrosis uh, can be caused inside the wound. So the sutures should be placed at a greater depth than the distance from the incision. And the completed knot must be tight form and tight so that slippage will not occur. And to avoid weakening of bacteria, knots should not be placed in incision lines. Knots should be small and the inch or short. Um, it is a long, long inch coming off. They will cause contamination and Infection, sutures should bring together the wound edges but should not cause indenting or glancing of the skin because the blood supply is impeded and the infection and scarring will be there. And sutured skin should draw slightly outward from the wound. Eversion should be there rather than inversion. Skin sutures should usually removed in 5 days and intraoral sutures are removed in 7 days. Suturing technique, simple interrupted suture. There are different types of sutures, simple interrupted suture and continuous suturing. In continuous suturing also there is simple continuous and interlocking. And mattress suture, horizontal mattress, vertical mattress, we shall see one by one. Simple interrupted stitch. It is the most common and the simplest to perform. Let's see here. This is the simple interrupted. Before giving another incision, before giving another suture, the suture is cut and another suture is completely unrelated to the first previous suture. It is called interrupted because the suture thread is caught between each individual stitch. If the wound looks like it is becoming infected, a few sutures can be removed easily without disrupting the entire closure. This is the main advantage of simple interrupted stitch. And can be, it can be used in all areas, but it may take longer to place than a continuous suture. See, it is a very tedious task to make one incision and place a knot there, another incision, place a knot, place a knot. So, when there is a long area to be sutured, this is not desirable, but see. This is an example of simple interrupted suture. And continuous suture, it is quicker, but it risks failing if the suture is caught in just one place. See, this is a continuous stitch. And if it is caught in just one place, let it be here, and all the suture will fail, and the, there is possibility of need of resuture. And sutures are placed again and again without tying each individual suture, and it is the technique of choice to help stop bleeding from skin eases, for example, in a scalp laceration. And continuous stitch is also are of two types. These are simple continuous and interlocking. We can see here simple continuous and interlocking. In simple continuous, this is the simple continuous suture. Simple continuous, whereas this is interlocking stitch. Interlocking con continuous stitch. And the examples are given here. Vertical and horizontal mattress stitch. These are also interrupted, but these are more complex and specialized for averting the skin and distributing tension. It is a good choice when the skin edges are difficult to avoid. This is the horizontal mattress. Here is got the vertical mattress. First one layer and then another layer. This is vertical mattress and this is horizontal mattress. And other stitches or suturing techniques include figure of eight stitches. That is figure of eight stitches. And this is subcuticular stitch. You go inside the skin and within the skin, within the below the cuticle, below the skin only you give the suture. And this is subcuticular stitch. Knots. Now let's discuss about the knots. The, the suture knot has three basic components: the loop, knot, and the ears. This is the loop. This one is the loop. This is the knot, and these two are the ears. And the loop is created by the knot. The knot is composed of a number of tight throws. Each throw represents a wave of the two strings, and the ears, which are the cuttings of the suture. This and the types. The basic types of knots are surgeon's knot, square knot, and granny knot. The square knot and granny knot they look very very similar, but what their difference? We shall discuss later. Square knot, it is formed by wrapping suture around the needle holder once in opposite direction between the ties. Granny knot tied in one direction, followed by a tie in same direction and a third tie in opposite direction. One direction, same direction, and third tie in opposite. It sounds a bit confusing, but uh, after we see the figure, we understand. Surgeon's knot, two throws of the suture around the needle holder on the first tie and one throw in the opposite direction in the second tie. Surgeon's knot. See, this is an example of surgeon's knot. Two throws in the first tie and it is tied, and single throw in the opposite direction. In the second tie, this is the correct way to make the surgeon's knot. And the difference between the square knot and granny's knot is that in this square knot, you can see this black thread. This black thread is going down, going from the downside in both both sides. But in this granny knot, the black thread is going from the upper side in this side and from the lower in this side. 
this is the basic difference between the granny's knot and square knot. Let's see. It is given more clearly here. The crossings are opposite in granny's knot, granny knot, and in square knot, the crossings are same. And in surgeon's knot, there are two throws and followed by a single throw opposite. And the completed knot must be tied, form, and tied so that slippage will not occur to avoid victim of bacteria. Knots should not be placed in incision lines. Knots should be small and the ends caught short. And sutures should bring that bring together the wound edges but should not cause indenting or blanching of the skin since the blood supply may be impeded and thus increase infection and scale. Suture skin should roll slightly outward from the wound. And skin sutures usually removed in seven days. And intraoral sutures are removed in skin sutures are re usually removed in five days. And intraoral in seven days because the intraoral sutures have a these are very delicate, so it needs more time to heal. And suture removal. To remove sutures, one tail of the suture should be grasped with forceps and pulled gently towards one side of the wound. One tail of the suture should be grasped with forceps and it is gently pulled towards one side of the wound. And this will elevate the knot. You can see the knot has been elevated here. And then the opposite side of the suture then should be caught with stitch cutters or fine suture scissors immediately under the knot. And the suture can then be pulled out of the tissue by pulling towards the opposite side of the wound. And this is again repeated here. Skin sutures are usually removed in seven. This is a basic introduction to uh, suturing technique. The tools uh, I'll be using is a driver. Scissors, tweezers, scalpel, and a suture needle with prepared thread. Uh, alternatively, you can use a um, bended needle, which is used for uh, upholstery, um, and a little bit thicker. I uh, recommend when training a little bit thicker polyester thread. Start with preparing the banana. Just making an incision and picking out the pulp. This is a little bit tedious, so I'll make a jump cut. So now the pulp is um, extracted and devoured. Um, it's cracked a little bit during the process. It will be a little bit more to sushi. Um, extracting the sushi. Never pick up a sushi needle on the tip, of course you may then damage it. When suturing, um, you always start suturing at the middle of the wound, then half, 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 half. Tips on now uh, while suturing is always keeping contact with the patient. For example, you have a finger down on the patient, Starting with to placing the wound in good position, and we start in the middle. So, now we're going to do our this knot. You will start with the side the suture needle is on, and then the driver use the side facing you. Start the way, and then you do two loops: one, two. You take over and pick up the thread. 
truly true. Um, being careful not to put too much force. Um, if you make your suture too tight, um, uh, the tissue will um, get necrosed because it won't be able to get en enough nourishment. So, is it sufficient force when we pull it together? Okay. Then we do the second. And you start on the back side of the driver. And flip the other one. And pull it through. So. Thank <laughs> you.